Hey gang and welcome to your very first Mernstack authentication tutorial. Alright then, so this series is a continuation from another series I made all about the Mern stack. And in that series, I showed you how to make this Mern application right here, which is a simple workout tracker. So if you've not seen that yet and you're completely new to the Mern stack, I would highly, highly recommend that you watch that series first before this one. That way you'll know exactly how this application was made from the ground up using React, Node, Express and MongoDB. And then learning the authentication side of things in this series will be much, much easier. So I'll leave that link to that course down below the video. If you have already seen that course or you're already comfortable with the basics of the Mern stack and you just want to see how to add authentication to it, then this is the course for you. So anyway, this application currently lets anyone add a new workout over here. And when we submit this form, it saves it to the database and also updates some global context state in the front end so that that workout shows in the UI over here as well. And we can also delete workouts as well by clicking the trash icon. And again, that will delete it from the UI and also from the database. But at the minute, anyone could come to this site and add workouts. And we'd see everyone's workouts in one giant list over here. What would be better is if users could sign up and log into the application and when they do that, they can add their own workouts. And then the workouts that they see on the left over here are only the ones added by them when they're logged in. So then each workout would belong to a specific user. So to demonstrate this, I've got the final project over here. This is what it's going to look like. So to begin with, it's going to protect the home page where the workouts are listed until we've either logged in or signed up. And then when we do log in, as Mario in this case, we get redirected to the home page or the dashboard where we can see all the workouts. And these workouts belong to just this user who is logged in. So if we add a new one over here, like sit-ups, and then we set the load to zero and the reps to about 20, we can add that and then it's going to add it to this list on the left and also save it to the database. But now if I log out, first off, you can see it redirects me away from the home page or the dashboard back to the login screen. So I can log in as someone else this time, for example, Peach, and also enter in a password. But once I've done that, and once I log in again, it's going to redirect me to the home page and I can see a list of exercises over here. But notice how they've changed and they're not the same ones that we just saw when we logged in with Mario, including the new one we just added, the sit ups. And that's because every user now has their own workouts. So this is the authentication process we're going to build in this series. And to do it, we'll be using JWT's JSON Web Tokens. Now, I'll talk more about those in the next lesson, because first up, we need to get this starter project up and running. So all the course files for every lesson in this series are on GitHub and this repo right here. And I'll leave the link to this page down below the video. Now, each lesson has its own branch in this repo. So if you wanted the code for lesson seven, for example, you can just select the lesson seven branch over here. And then if you want to download the code for that lesson, just hit the green code button and then you can download a zip folder of the code for that lesson. Now, to begin with, we want to grab the starter project, which is on the lesson one branch. So go ahead and select that first of all. And then again, once you've got that selected, hit the green code button and then download a zip folder of this lesson. And this contains all of the code for the starter project. So once you've downloaded it, extract the folder and then you can go inside it and you'll find this lesson one folder. This is the root project folder and I'm just going to rename it to be Mern hyphen app. And then once I've done that, I can just right click it to open the project up inside VS Code, but you can use whatever editor that you wish. Now, when you do that, you're going to see that inside we've got a front end folder and we've got a back end folder as well. So 
I just want to take a couple of minutes to explain what's inside these and how the project is structured. So the backend folder contains the Node Express app code, and it's a simple Express API with various routes already set up to manage requests for workout data. Now we can see those routes in the routes folder and inside the workouts file where we register all of those workout routes. So we have one for getting all of the workouts, for getting a single workout, for posting new workouts, updating, deleting, etc. And all of these routes are hooked up to different controller functions to handle those requests. Now those controller functions are from the controllers folder inside the workout controller file. So inside here, we have all of these functions to get data, create data, update data, delete data, etc. And all that data is coming from MongoDB. Now, the way we interact with MongoDB is by using Mongoose models. You can see right here, we're using a workout model to do all of these different read and write actions. And that workout model is coming from the models folder inside the workout file. So, we make a schema for the model, which enforces a structure on the documents that we save to the database in terms of what properties they should have and what types they should be, etc. And it also is configured to apply timestamps like a created app property to the documents too when they're created. And then at the end, we make a model based on that schema and we export it so it can be used in that controller file. And then finally, inside the server.js file, we create the express app, use a bit of middleware, register the workout routes, and then connect to MongoDB down here. The URI for this, by the way, is stored in an environment variable inside the .env file over here. Now, you need to make sure that you have your own database set up with your own connection string for this to work, and don't use mine. Now, if you want to see how to do that, or for that matter, to see how any of this code that I've been showing you here is created from scratch, then definitely check out my MERN stack tutorial first, where we build this API from the ground up. And the link to that course is down below the video. Anyway, that's the backend code pretty much covered. It does have a few dependencies that we need to install. So to do that, open up a terminal first of all, and then you need to CD into the backend folder. And then you just need to type npm install and press enter to install all of those dependencies. And while that's going on, I can go through the front end code with you. So inside the front end folder, we have a React application, which is pretty simple to be honest. We have the root app component over here, and inside that we set up the React router to make a home page route. And for that route, we show the home component. The home component is inside the pages folder and it just represents the home page content. Inside it, we fetch the workouts data from the backend API using the use effect hook, which runs just once when the component renders. Once we get the data back, we use a dispatch function to update the global workout context state. Now, the workout context is created inside the workout context file in the context folder. And inside that file, we have a state value for the workout, which starts out as null. We also have a reducer function, which updates our state whenever we dispatch an action, like we did in the home component. So inside the reducer function, we handle three different cases. One for setting the workouts, which we use when we fetch all of the workouts to begin with, like in the home component. One for creating new workouts, which we use when we submit the form and add a new workout to the database. And one for deleting workouts, which we use after we hit the delete button and delete a workout from the database. So this global context wraps our entire application so that we can access it in any other component. And we can see that if we open up the index.js file, it wraps the app component, which is the root component, meaning all of the components inside the React application can access this context value. Now to consume the context, we have a use workout context hook inside the hooks folder. So this just basically returns the context value, which contains the workouts and the dispatch function. So if we want to use the context in any component, we just invoke this hook right here, this use workouts context hook. And that's exactly what we do in the home component. We invoke the hook and grab the workouts and the dispatch function. So once we fetch the data, 
we dispatch the action to update the workout state and in turn the value of the workouts from that hawk update too and then we cycle through those workouts in the template for each workout we output a workout details component which is found inside the components folder and inside this component we basically just output the workout details like the title the load and the number of reps we also have a button for deleting workouts which fires a function that sends a delete request to the server and that function also dispatches a delete action to update the global state as well to remove that workout from it finally we have a workout form component which is also nested in the home component at the bottom and inside this form component is just a simple form where we can add new workouts now when we do that we send a post request to the server to add it and also dispatch a create action to update the global context state too to keep our ui always in sync with the database also all the styling comes from the index.css file and we also load in a google font called poppins as well to make things look a bit nicer and that my friends is the front end in a nutshell again we do have some dependencies that we need to install so open up a terminal again and we'll get a new terminal going since this one's currently for the back end folder and then in this new terminal we can just cd into the front end folder and then we just need to type npm install and hit enter so then now we need to run the front end react app but also the back end express app as well so that they can communicate with each other and also so we can preview the application in a browser so to do that we need to open up the terminal in the back end first of all to spin up the back end and we need to type npm run dev now this spins up a local server on port 4000 for the back end express api and then in the other terminal for the front end we need to type npm start so we have two different things going on two different dev servers right and the front end is the react app and this is going to spin up a dev server on port 3000 for us to preview the react app on in the browser so once both of these are finished we can open this up in the browser to take a look and this is a positive start everything seems to be working without errors that's awesome and you can see all of this pre-existing data over here if we want to we can delete some of these so i could just go and delete a few of these if i wanted to and you can see they're gone from the list on the left and i could add new ones so for example i could add sit-ups again zero and 20 and it should appear over at the top over here cool so when we first load the page we're making that initial request to the api in the back end to get all of the data so the express app is interacting with mongodb to get all of the workouts data for us we bring it back to the react app and we output those in the browser and also when we try to add one over here that sends a post request and when the server gets that post request it adds the new workout to the database and also we see the ui update over here and same for when we click on one of these it sends a delete request to the server to delete that document from the database and we also update the ui over here using the global context state so that there my friends is the starter project that's where we're starting off and we're going to start the whole authentication flow in the next lesson by adding some user routes on the backend api again if all of this project went over your head then definitely check out the mern beginners tutorial where we make this project from scratch first of all and then come back here by the way if you want to watch this entire course now without youtube adverts you can do it's all up on the net ninja website netninja.dev you can buy the course for two dollars to get instant access to all of it or you can sign up to net ninja pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts as well as premium courses not found on youtube including my udemy ones that's nine dollars a month and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here so i'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up and i really hope you enjoy this series and please do not forget to share subscribe and like the videos that really helps a lot and i'm going to see you in the very next lesson